Hey everyone. Long time no see. I'm going to do my plug first so we don't interrupt the video later. If you're new here, I've been doing a challenge where I kill Hornet 100 times a day, every day, until Silk Song is released. If you'd like to see that, or just more of me in general, feel free to subscribe. It's free and you can always change your mind later. Anyways, the topic of today's video. Charms. More specifically, how bad can they get? I've seen lots of discussion about what the best charm is, the best loadout, my favorite charm, and these are all valid questions, but ones that have been beaten into the ground over the years. So today, I wanted to spice things up a bit. I'm going to rank every charm in the game in order to determine which one is the absolute worst. Let's get started. If you don't want an in-depth analysis of every charm, just skip to this timestamp for the clickbait title. For tiers, at the bottom we have Staple, where all the charms that are widely considered to be the best of the best, either for speedrunning or casual play, will go. Pretty good is the tier where charms can be swapped out with top tier ones of personal preference, and or have their own niche uses. Situational is for charms that have their uses, but generally are put aside for other, better charms. Really bad is for charms that are right on the border between situational and useless, and the worst is exactly what it sounds like. This tier list I'm using is in alphabetical order, so let's start with Balder Shell. Balder Shell costs two notches and is a defensive charm used for protection while healing, and is acquired in the area right below Howling Cliffs. If you get damaged while focusing soul, instead of losing health, the Balder Shell will tank the hit and put you in hit stun up to four times. Sitting on a bench refreshes the shell. It's not a bad charm on the surface, its use is pretty obvious if you're bad at dodging and just feel like tanking a hit by pushing a button, this charm is for you. However, as far as defensive charms go, there are better options out there that don't run out after four hits. Defensive builds aren't even that popular in the first place. Balder Shell is pretty bad. Carefree Melody is acquired by banishing the Grim Troop and then talking to Nim and Dirtmouth. One of the three notch charms, it's another defensive charm that doesn't require you to focus soul to save health like Balder Shell, but instead is replaced with an RNG factor. Each time the knight is hit, the chance of blocking damage is increased by 10.1%, up to a max of 90.9. This averages out to around a 23.4% chance to block hits overall. The block chance doesn't reset if you die or unequip the charm. With a max of 9 health, in a fight you're probably only going to be tanking 2 to 3 hits before dying, if you're lucky. If you're going to take a defensive charm, Carefree Melody isn't bad, but it's usually found towards the end of the playthrough, so you probably already have a loadout you like, and with it costing 3 notches, it'll be hard to squeeze in. It notably has a single challenge run used for the modded boss, Any Radiance, but only a handful of people have even beaten that, so if you take a lot of hits, Carefree Melody would be useful, but I believe it's situational at best. Dashmaster can be found at the bottom of the Fungal Wastes, underneath the Mantis Village and before Breda. It costs two notches, and equipping it decreases the cooldown of your dash by 33%. Note that it does not decrease the cooldown of Shade Cloak once you acquire it. The only real downside to equipping this charm is you can accidentally dash downwards into spikes during platforming segments, although this problem was fixed in patch 1.5. It's not a bad option casually if you're like me and would, for example, run back to the Seer every time you got another 100 essence from a Dream Warrior. Dashmaster has also been used in speedruns in the past, in 106% runs, it's used during the Flower Quest, and in 112%, it's used to navigate the overworld faster. Dashmaster is pretty good. Deep Focus is found in Crystal Peak, behind a breakable wall guarded by a miner. It costs 4 notches and doubles the amount of health you gain from focusing soul, at the cost of it taking 65% longer to focus. Notably, the only thing really holding Deep Focus back from being a good charm is the 4 notch cost. It has some really good synergies, like Quick Focus or Grub Song. You won't be taking deep focus for boss battles, but if you're doing White Palace or Path of Pain or another difficult platforming section, it's not bad. However, seeing as those take up a minuscule portion of the game, deep focus is pretty bad. Defender's Crest is gained by defeating Dung Defender in the Royal Waterways. It costs one charm notch and is pretty freaking useless. The charm releases a stink cloud that deals three damage and lasts for one second. Its uses and synergies are incredibly niche, only being useful in A, one boss fight, Broken Vessel slash Lost Can and can pop the balloons, and B, Leg Eater will give you a 20% discount on his charms. Seeing as most players don't use the fragile charms in their builds anyways, and the synergies it has with other charms are negligible at best, makes Defender's Crest our first contender for the worst. Next up is Dream Shield, found in the room below the Seer and Resting Grounds. 
It costs 3 charm notches and creates a floating shield around the player that can block projectiles. It can also collide with enemies dealing 1 times your nail damage before needing to recharge for 2 seconds. Its only synergy is with Dream Wielder, making the shield 15% larger with both equipped at the same time. The defense it gives you is less than good because 90% of the time the shield won't be in the right spot in its rotation to block anything at all. The extra nail hit can be nice if you play safe, but the fact you need 4 charm notches for it to be useful is asking a bit too much. Dream Shield is pretty bad. Dream Wielder is our next charm, attained from the Seer after collecting 500 essence. It doubles the essence gained from a Dream Nail hit and reduces the charge time of the attack by 37%. It is by far the best soul gathering charm in the game. Not only is it useful for casual play, I personally loved how short the Dream Gate animation took in my casual playthrough, but the fact that it is used in multiple speedruns due to the amount of soul the player can get in a short amount of time makes Dream Wielder our first staple. Up next, let's see here. Fluke Nest. I won't go into depth here, but Blue SR made a great video about what makes Fluke Nest so broken already, so if you'd like to know why it's our second staple, go check that out. Fury of the Fallen is found in a chest in King's Pass and costs two charm notches. This charm boosts your nail's damage by 75%, but only when the knight has one health left. This makes the charm pretty freaking useless as a casual. Personally, I can't remember a single time when I was fighting a boss at 1 HP where my next thought wasn't, oh shit, oh fuck, I need to get a heal off right now, Jesus Christ, please. It has one single minor use in 106%, and even then it only saves 8-ish seconds in a 2.5 hour run. Those numbers might be wrong, but 8 was what came to me off the top of my head, so that's what I'm going with. These two facts combined means that Fury of the Fallen is our second contender for the worst. Gathering Swarm, every casual player's best friend. It costs one charm notch and is found in Sly's shop for 300 Geo. I don't know a single person that didn't use this charm at least once in their casual playthrough. This doesn't mean it's a good charm, but the fact that everyone uses it nets it a pretty good rating. Glowing Womb costs 2 notches and can be found in a secret cave near the False Knight's arena. At the cost of 8 soul, it spawns a hatchling that will attack enemies, exploding for 9 damage on hit. The player can have a max of 4 hatchlings out at a time, and they only spawn once every 4 seconds. Using simple arithmetic, that means that this charm does the same amount of damage in 16 seconds that Fluke Nest does in one spell. Its synergies don't help it out at all, the only notable one being Fury of the Fallen, which adds 5 damage to the hatchlings when active. This does absolutely nothing for it, and it will join Fury of the Fallen and Defender's Crest in the worst. Grimchild doesn't need much explaining. It costs two charm notches and is found after summoning the Grim Troop via the Lantern at Howling Cliffs. The Grim Child itself does negligible damage, and is more often an annoyance and or hindrance than it is useful. You'd be better off getting Carefree Melody for your playthrough, unless you want to fight Nightmare King Grim. Its only use is furthering the DLC's progression, putting it in the pretty bad tier. Grubberfly's Elegy, my beloved. It costs 3 notches and sucks massive amounts of ass. Look, if you were able to get this charm earlier in the game, then it'd be pretty sick. However, since it's only obtainable after collecting every single grub in the game, that already makes it pretty freaking bad. But on top of that, the shockwave it creates only deals half your nail's damage. It is one of the highest risk charms in the game, not in the sense that it's dangerous, but it requires the player to massively change their playstyle to not get hit, ever. I used it as a meme during my Hitless Pantheon 5 run, and ever since then it has been my little tiny baby. But yeah, it's pretty bad. Worst tier. I don't know how Team Cherry managed to make the halfway point on the Grub Awards so much better than the finale, but Grub Song found a way. It costs 1 notch and gives the player 15 soul when they take damage, about half of a spell's cost. Grub Song is useful both in casual play and in speedruns. In the former, it allows players who get a hit a lot to rationalize their mediocre gameplay with free soul as well as it's currently used in 112% speedruns during Pantheons due to, again, the free soul when taking hits. It's often the correct play to jump into hazards to gain soul during Pantheon 5. Grub Song is pretty good. Heavy Bill costs 2 notches and can be bought from Sly for 350 Geo. It... Knocks back enemies further. <sighs> Why did they think this was a good idea? I guess it also reduces the number of hits you need to stagger a boss by 1? but that's literally nothing in the grand scheme of things. Your notches are so much better spent on other things. Fifth charm in the worst tier. Hive Blood costs four notches and is found after defeating the Hive Knight. Personally, I hate this charm. I didn't have the patience to stand around for 10 seconds every time I wanted some health back in the White Palace. That's just me, 
I know lots of people used it all the time. Other than the hefty notch cost, there isn't much to say here. Hive blood is situational at best. I'm going to lump Joni's Blessing, Lifeblood Heart, and Lifeblood Core all together since they all do the same thing, to varying degrees. They're useful charms if you take a lot of damage and want a couple freebies, although in Joni's Blessing case it's more high risk as you can't heal masks without sitting on a bench. They have no use in speedruns, so they're all situational. King Soul can be found after assembling the two white pieces gained from the White Lady and Finishing White Palace. It is the only charm in the game to cost 5 notches, and isn't very useful. It generates 4 soul every 2 seconds, meaning it will take 20-ish seconds of doing nothing to even gain 1 soul usage. I don't know how many people who thought this was useful enough to implement in their builds, however it's a required charm for story progression, so I'll at least put it in the pretty bad tier. I'm also going to lump Long Nail and Mark of Pride together. Long Nail increases the reach of your nail by 15%, almost no difference at all, while Mark of Pride increases it by 25%. If you really want to be far away, you can equip them both at the same time, but I don't know many people who would take nail distance over straight damage. I don't think they're part of the worst, but they're pretty dang close. We'll leave them in pretty bad for now. Nail Master's Glory can only be attained after mastering all three nail arts and then talking to Sly afterwards. It costs one notch and it reduces the charge time of nail arts by 45%. Pretty straightforward charm. It's useful in a lot of situations. If you have your nail fully upgraded, this thing will shred every normal enemy in the game as well as making challenges like the Colosseum fights a lot easier. Nailmaster's Glory is pretty good. Quick Focus can be bought from Salubra for 800 Geo and costs 3 notches. It lets the Knight Focus soul 33% faster, and as far as defensive charms go, it's top tier. Your heal comes out so insanely fast compared to normal, which is comparatively useful against most bosses. It's surprising how much more useful Quick Focus is than Deep Focus. If Quick Focus was 2 notches and Deep Focus were 3, they'd actually be useful, but as it is, we'll leave Quick Focus at pretty good. Next up is Quick Slash, found in a secret room near the bottom of Kingdom's Edge. It costs 3 notches and allows the knight to swing their nail 40% faster. I personally haven't heard of anybody using this in a casual playthrough, as it is very hard to get used to. Although if you are going for a full nail build, then it's a staple. Quick Slash also sees use in 112%, albeit only for the Pantheons at the end of the run. It's not fantastic, it's not terrible, just situational. Shaman's Tone can be buffed from Salubra for 220 Geo and increases the power of your spells. It's used in every main category of speedrun, and a good 90% of casual playthroughs. Not much to analyze here. It's a staple. Shape of Oon is obtained from Oon in the Lake of Oon, costs 2 notches, and turns Knight into a little tiny slug that can move around when focusing soul. Other than being adorable, this charm falls under personal preference. I would take Shape of Oon over Quick Focus, but Quick Focus synergies outshine Shape of Oon by a little too much, meaning Shape of Oon is just situational. Sharp Shadow is found below the Garpede Room in Deep Nest. It costs 2 notches and increases the length of your Shade Dash, while also damaging enemies you pass through for 1 times your nail damage. While this playstyle takes some getting used to, I think that this is one of the highest payoff charms that you could put into build. Even if you're spell focused, this charm allows you to sneak in some damage when you would be dashing in a fight regardless. It's also started to see some use in 112% recently. Similar to Dash Master, it's incredibly useful in traversing the overworld. While I feel there is a world where Sharp Shadow could be a staple, as it stands, I think it rests at just pretty good. But it's like towing the line of staple. Just barely. Soul Catcher is found in Ancestral Mound past the Elder Balder. It costs 2 notches and gives the player an extra 3 soul per nail hit. It makes for a fantastic early game charm, as you're not going to have many options progression-wise since you just got done killing False Knight. Even after I had gotten other, more useful charms, I remember always trying to squeeze in those extra two notches, just so I could be getting more soul. While it's not insane, Soul Catcher is definitely pretty good. Soul Eater is found in the resting grounds past several secret walls to the right. It costs a whopping four notches, with the upside of gaining an extra eight soul per hit instead of a measly three. This is one of those charms that's hard to balance without making it incredibly OP. If it costs any less than 4 notches, then it'd be a staple in every build. The amount of soul this thing gains for you is insane. On the flip side, you could also try justifying the high notch cost by boosting the soul gain even more, but this would also be breaking the game. As it stands, Soul Eater is just a bit too good for its own good, and as such I think it just sets it pretty useful. Spell Twister is found in Soul Sanctum in a secret room in the ceiling just before the Soul Master fight. It costs 2 notches and reduces the cost of casting spells by roughly one third. This one doesn't need much explaining, 
If you're running a spell build, you use it. Hell, even if you're using a nail build, I'd argue that this wouldn't be bad to take because you get four descending darks to dodge damage with instead of just three. Spell Twister is OP and should be a staple in any build. Spore Shroom is found in the bottom left hand of Fungal Wastes, costs one Charm Notch, and is practically useless. After focusing a soul, the player releases a Spore Cloud that deals around 26 damage over 4 seconds. Or in other words, just barely more damage than swinging your nail. It also allows you to understand Mushroom Language, but I barely count this as an upside since only 5% of players have even gotten that achievement. That's less than the number of people who have left Zote to die on their first playthrough. Spore Shroom is an easy contender for the worst. Sprintmaster can be bought from Sly for 400 Geo, costs 1 notch, and increases the knight's walking speed by 20%. This is what a 1 notch charm should be. The bonus you get from it isn't trying to do anything special, it doesn't force you to play around an asinine playstyle, looking at you, Sporsh Room. It just gives the player a nice little boost, which honestly is a little addictive. If you start using this charm, it'll be hard to ever unequip it because everything feels so slow. I hesitate to call it anything better than situational, but if you have an extra notch in your build, I'd recommend throwing it in. It's a solid situational. Stalwart Shell can be bought from Sly for 200 Geo. It costs 2 notches and increases the invulnerability window after getting hit by 35%, while also reducing recoil by 60%, meaning you can input things faster after being hit. I've never heard of anyone using this charm other than against any Radiance. If you're going for defensive charms, just go for Quick Focus, or heck, I'd even take Shape of Oon over this. I'd put this in the pretty bad tier, but looking at it, at least I can think of some situations where I'd possibly use those other charms, something that I can't say for Stalwart Shell. It goes in the worst. Steady Body can be bought from Salubra for 120 Geo. It costs one notch and removes all knockback when hitting enemies with the nail. Steady Body is a charm that's hard to see the point of until you equip it, realize how many times you are tapping a directional button after hitting enemies. It takes a little getting used to, but once you do, combat becomes a lot more comfortable, especially for people that like using spells over nail. It's a straightforward charm that lands firmly in situational. Thorns of Agony can be found in a side room in Green Path. It costs one notch and does base nail damage in a radius around the player when hit. Note, that's base nail damage, meaning five damage and not one times your nail damage. This charm is insanely bad, and I used it for the majority of my casual playthrough. I got hit so many times that I'm sure I was dealing more damage that way than hitting the enemy with my nail. The only issue that I had with it is that you're frozen for a second longer due to the animation playing after the initial knockback from a hit. That being said, it's not used in any speedruns, and I haven't heard of anyone using it casually, so it goes in pretty bad. I'm going to lump Fragile Heart and Fragile Greed together. Both charms can be bought from Leg Eater, 350 and 250 Geo respectively. Fragile Heart gives the player an extra 2 masks of health, and Fragile Greed makes enemies drop 20 to 100% more Geo, depending on the enemy. The issue with these charms is in their name. They're fragile. If the player dies, the charms break, and you have to walk all the way back to Leg Eater to get them repaired. They're not used casually because of the whole breaking thing, and they're not used in speedruns because they don't make you go fast, though these two charms fall under pretty bad. The golden child of the fragile charms is Fragile Strength, and in my opinion, is the only fragile charm worth the upgrading cost of 9,000 Geo. This charm is that good. Fragile Strength costs 3 notches and increases the nail's damage by 50%. With the nail fully upgraded, that means the knight swings for 32 damage per hit. For context, Broken Vessel has 525 HP, meaning it would only take 16 nail hits to kill. If you're using a nail build, it's a hard requirement. It's also used in almost every Pantheon speedrun due to the insane amount of damage it can output when combined with Fury of the Fallen and Quick Slash. Fragile Strength is a staple. Does Voidheart even count as a charm? I guess it's a staple, because it's stapled to your body when you get it. I don't know. Sure, it's a staple. Next. Wayward Compass is a casual player's best friend. It can be bought from a Zelda for 150 Geo, and shows the knight's location on the map, provided you've bought the map for that area. I'm convinced there is not a single player that has never equipped this charm. It's a staple, no questions asked. Finally, that brings us to Weaver's Song. Weaver's Song can be found in the Weaver's Den behind a secret wall in Deep Nest. It costs two Charm Notches and summons up to three Weaverlings at a time that can attack for three damage per hit. Its only fringe use is if you're doing the meme summons build, and I use the term meme liberally because it does next to no damage. I'm also not a huge fan of any charm that kills things when you don't want them to. 
Looking at you, Umas. It's generally useless and is a contender for the worst. Okay. Jeez, guess this turned into a deep dive analysis. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Anyways, now that that's out of the way, we can get rid of 90% of all the work I just did over four days. Now it's time to figure out what you all got clickbaited here for. Which of these is the absolute worst charm in the entire game? While they all generally don't meet the bar for what a good charm should look like, some of them do have their very, very niche uses. Weaver Song and Glowing Womb are both really, really bad, but as I mentioned earlier, if you're doing a build involving minions, they're both required. Grumberfly Elegy can be a good option to hit things from a safe distance, provided you're okay with your strategy going out the window if you take a single hit. It can also be used for Radiant Fights in the Hall of Gods. Spore Shroom is required for the Mystery Mushroom ending, Defender's Crest gets you a discount on Leg Eater's charms, and Fury of the Fallen increases your damage output by a lot. If Stalwart Shell was just one charm notch, it wouldn't be that bad, but in a world where charms like Soul Twister and Soul Catcher both exist, there's just no reason to take it over anything else. That being said, it does have the incredibly niche use of being good when fighting any Radiance, but that is it. If you're good at the process of elimination, then you've probably already guessed which charm is the big winner. That's right, everybody, give us a round of applause for tonight's biggest loser, Heavy Blow! This charm just does absolutely nothing. Decreasing the number of hits it takes to stagger a boss? So freaking what? Why does it cost two notches? Two? I wouldn't even use this charm if it costed zero notches. I know saying it has no use is the smallest, itty bittiest, tiniest stretch of the truth, but against certain bosses, that is the actual situation. That is to say, against 22 of the 40 boss roster, this charm is absolutely worthless. I don't know how I would balance indifferently. Maybe make it cost one less notch. Maybe have bosses stagger in 1.5 to 2 hits less instead of just one. I don't know. If they combined Long Nail and Heavy Blow into one charm, I could see it being an okay charm at best. But as it is now, there is literally zero reason to ever equip this charm. Wow, this video turned out way longer than I initially thought it would. If you watched the whole thing, thanks. It means a whole lot. Heck, even if you just skip to the big reveal, you clicked on the video and that's enough for me. Like I said at the beginning, if you'd like to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe. I'm also leaving all of my socials in the description, including my Patreon, where you can get access to a whole bunch of perks, like getting videos before YouTube does. You could also join my Discord, so you can double make sure that you don't miss any content I put out. That being said, I appreciate all of you, and I hope you all have a great day. See you next time.